March 23rd, 2021. It's been a long time since I've done an update. Um, it's mainly rinse and repeat these days as um, we're just kind of like clearing out the dead wood, all the hazard uh, wooden stuff and burning it. But there are a few other little things I can show you. So I don't know if any of in the any of the other videos I have shown um, our garden area. Um, I don't have the garden started yet because we don't have irrigation hooked up. Um, we should be getting electricity pretty soon once the permits are all cleared. So the blueprints were submitted a while back, and then we got the some stuff that needed to be corrected. Um, so they could be approved by different departments and we're currently working on that right now um, everything should be passing on thursday we got a couple of these things on ebay um, they are called cozy well anyways um they're supposed to have top plank on here but i think i'm going to stack the two of them to make a tall area and then we actually have I'm going to have to cut part of the fence out, but we have this vent section right here. So we're going to make it where when we bring the cats up, they can be in the RV and come out this vent area to this and climb around. And once they get a little more used to it, um, this PVC pipe, I'm using half inch pipe um, and a bunch of connectors. Um, this is going to eventually be my eco brick um, greenhouse. And then we did uh, get this fence, um, this bigger squared one, for 50 bucks, and we got some more rolls um, up in Bass Lake off the of Facebook Marketplace. And then um, also up in Bass Lake uh, near the annex area, this guy was giving away a bunch of chain link. Um, it was in a bunch of little small sections, so we're putting it on there to make it taller to keep out um, a lot of the rodents and the deer. We will be putting some bird netting up as well. Uh, we plan to, this is a pretty big garden area, so we plan to get a 4x4 post and kind of station it as much in the middle as we can because the garden area is kind of like, almost kind of like an oval shape and then do like a bird netting tent type of thing. So I may have to sew some sections together um, and the cats will, I'll make a tunnel from the, the other things to come into here so the cats will have a bigger area. Some of the other things that have been done um, in the past like month or so is um, my husband has started, almost actually finished, building the chicken coop, which we're going to use for guinea hens first. And we're planning on getting guinea hens pretty soon. And we'll probably get about 20 of them. Uh, this coop is large enough to hold 40 chickens. Um, he's still planning. We have a little door over here. And then this section right here will be enclosed. This will be their nesting area. We'll have a couple doors that we can open up to clean out and get eggs once it is uh, taken over by the chickens. Um, for the most part, they're going to be free ranged and then sleeping in that at night. I got a lot more to burn right here. We widened the road and I was cutting out a lot of the poison oak. Luckily, I didn't get too much poison oak. I just got a couple little specks here and there on my arms. But now it is starting to... Ooh, there's a rabbit. Hello, bunny. There it is. Those guys are everywhere. Um, if you can see, they're starting to bloom. They got a greenish red tint to them and they've got their three leaf markers. So that's all in there. It's pretty much, this is the whole back road that has a lot of the poison oak. But we did cut out a lot. I still got a couple areas I have to cut back. We wanna make this road um, wide enough to where we can get RVs through easily and cars if they wanna drive up to the lake and not walk. I still need to cut this one down at the base. And that is riddled with poison oak. I've gotta take some of that out. And I think there was another one up here, the one that's hanging out in the road. I don't know if you can see it right here. That's all poison oak. So I got to cut that back. I'm going to try to 
walk fast without losing too much breath. But if you go back to my very first video, I think the lighting is kind of cruddy um, on this road. But it was really overgrown. It was really hard to even get a vehicle through here. We did some cutting back before we moved in and moved the RV. But even with the cutting back that we originally did, wasn't enough to get our 40-footer um, through without scraping on the sides and stuff. Um, I think in the second video, possibly, there is a marker for us bringing the RV in. We had some trouble with long hanging branches. This area is all completely, so they've had a lot of little burn piles, but cleaned out this tree a whole lot. There's still a lot to do. We've coursed over probably about six to eight acres that we've cleared out. Still some really thick foliage and stuff and dead wood that needs to be cleaned out, but you know, over time. So, whew, our foundation should be going in in April for the house. We have not purchased the shop yet since it's gonna be bigger than a 10 by 10. Um, we will need to submit blueprints to the county for approval. So that's probably the process we're gonna do once the foundation for the house and the wrapping gets started. <sighs> so I'm gonna push pause for a minute so I can get up here and you guys don't have to hear me wheezing and breathing. All right, we're up at the cross section for the back road going down to the pad and the, the connecting point where it goes off to the lake. And there was a big, huge bump here that every time I brought the tractor through, sometimes the back tire would come off the ground. So I took the bump out, but while I was digging the bump out, I found a bunch of rock and stuff. There was more. And there is a ravine from water erosion because this is the safest way to bring the, uh, an RV in or big equipment. <sighs> so I think this is what my mom is planning on tackling today, is probably pulling dirt. There's a mound right here from on this side and filling it in. And then I've been doing some kind of like, I guess you would say redneck grading, because I don't have a grading bucket for the tractor. Um, but I do have small sections of chain link fence I've been hooking up to the hitch and putting rocks or big pieces of wood on it and dragging it around. You can kind of see, I was doing this yesterday. Um, there's a little ravine in here I still want to fill up. So the lake road, this is the back road now. We widened this so much. My mom actually brought her car back here the other day to show some of her neighbors the property. And she was able to get her car through without any problems, which is... <sighs> So I think this is where they started. There was a erosion rut that went all the way down. It was pretty significant. You can see we started digging and raking off the hill here and pulling dirt down. We'll probably have to do more later as the earth settles. But we just wanted to make it wider and safer. And then I dragged stuff around the fence. <sighs> Ooh, I'll get that out of the road. Still got to pull up some of these rocks, but it is a smoother ride and will be even more so once everything settles. <sighs> so it rained a couple days ago and we got great water flow. Not as much as my water overfloweth video. That was after like a two or three day rain. But it's still awesome to be able to hear um, the little waterfalls going down. 
and you can see we got a couple fire pits that we had over here a few weeks back this is going to be one of the beach we call this the lakeside um, right now but it's pretty much I still got some stuff right here in the middle that can be burned but for the most part it's a huge upgrade to what it used to be here's some of the rocks that I put in here that I found in that other corner and then here's the dam so it's not rushing but it's still filling um, we have noticed that there's uh, five turtles that live over here. Um, I haven't seen them yet, but my daughter and my husband have counted a total of five. So I'm going to pause now because I'm going to be inserting a before uh, video that I took a couple weeks back. Um... Once we got this part mostly done, we went over this berm here and there was a really, really wooded area that uh, full of lots of dead trees that we cut back and fixed. Um, so I do have a, a before video that I'll be inserting and then I'll come back to this video to show you the, for the most part, the after. We found another area near the creek side that is full of dead wood. So this is the before video. Here's one spot. But this could be a really nice, this is kind of on the edge. You can see over there, that's all dead wood. Way over there. There's a lot of dead wood over there. So we're going to be spending the next few days unless something else comes up, cleaning this area out. All right, so we're at the top of the berm. The before video is from down there. There's a wood pile for burning. Um, but you can see this is a lot, a lot more shaded than um, the sunny side over here. Uh, we eventually, if the water drains out all the way by the end of summer like it was when we first were looking at the property uh, there's a huge sand bed at the bottom we want to get like a backhoe and pull sand out and fill this area up with sand so it'll be like a beach and then it'll allow more water to be in the lake and then if there's enough because the sand pretty much goes all the way to back here we want to also be able to pull some onto this area down here let me walk down this has taken us i don't know i think we've been working on this area for about five six days total still got a lot um this is the the biggest part is getting the chainsaw and cutting this monstrosity apparently this was a cottonwood i think the, the neighbors that own the back 80 acres um, have a picture of when it was alive before it fell that they're going to share with us eventually but the ends here we've already cut off because they went out pretty far um, and then it goes all the way up i'm debating if i want to leave some of this because it, it's kind of cool that you can just walk under it because it is up high enough but i'm not sure how much that tree that oak is supporting that um, it'll also make it a lot easier to get all that underbrush out so, but it's getting a lot clearer. There's a lot of wood that we've already cut up that I need to move down to the pad. And we've raked out a lot of the water. But this place is right at the property's edge. So over here, uh, I don't know what video it is. I have a video where we found the marker, but there's the marker right there for the property's end. And if we go over here. So that's one corner piece for the end of the right side of the property. And then actually there's a spray paint. It's called a monument. There's a spray painted area. Can't see it right now because the water's too high. But it is on. Let's see if I can get my finger in here. It is on that rock over there. 
so if you keep that rock in view and then there's the marker so it goes across the lake to about that area and then kind of caddy corners back to the corner of the dam and that's how much of the lake is on our property we've seen uh, ducks out here and geese tons of frogs at night we've seen little woodland I don't know what they are they're kind of look like a cross between a rat and a hamster um, I think they're voles I found one with a short tail there was one living in here uh, this mound was really really tall that we took out he's gonna have to go find another home but so this area is going to be a really nice area to chill and if we have family and friends that want to come up and camp they can go explore and find where they want to go but I just keep on cleaning this area needs to be raked you can see how many pine needles are on the ground which is an extreme fire hazard um, it's probably half inch deep or more maybe an, about an inch half inch um, of pine needles that'll be raked up but I've been working my way up here and clearing out areas and the cool thing is there's a lot of manzanita trees and just found out today that you can eat the manzanita berries and you can use them in baking using them in jams which I'm excited about because uh, I'm a jam maker so that's something I may start harvesting today and one of the jam recipes I found is actually meant for these blossoms get a bunch of those and boil them for a little while and get the juices from them and you just look online and you can find manzanita blossom jelly so that's pretty cool I gotta wait for these to turn into berries because uh, the first round of berries have already dried up so we're gonna go ahead and go this way haven't seen the bobcat since my last sighting that I have a video of and you can see I do have a lot of brush piles that still need to be burned And there's another brush pile down there we had a fell tree a pine tree it was dead it was gonna fall eventually so we just went ahead and cut that down now we're letting all the wood just sit in season got all that cleared out there is a really cool spot over here um, I try to remember to insert a picture of what I want to do on this little pad up here and it's got great views maybe I'll remember to put in some sunset pictures too because there was a beautiful sunset the other day that um, I took pictures of from this little pad still got more clearing out to do as well up here because we've started but kind of bounce around Ugh. so here's a nice area that we've cleaned up so this pad right here I want to make a bottle brick dome area to where Maybe somebody can go camping in it or the kids can play in it. But it's big enough, I think, for me to be able to do maybe like a 20 by 20. And I am already saving bottles to do that. But you kind of have a view. There's a lot of trees in the way, which I'm not going to really cut down or trim. But it is a really nice area. That tree, the kids climb, like way up there. So, all right, I think I'm done showing off stuff that we've done. So this is your update. Bye, everyone. So 